Okay, I think we will start now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's keynote lecture for the AI School Sustainable Environmental Design Program. I'm Simo Zianas, Director of SED. It is a great pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Mario Cucinera, a visionary architect and designer whose innovative research-based practice spans more than 30 years. Mario started his architectural practice with the Renta Piano building workshop in Genova before founding his own practice, Mario Cucinera Architects in Paris and Bologna in the early 1990s. From his base in Bologna, he has since created a truly international practice with projects in many countries. Mario founded the Building Green Futures Initiative in 2012. 2012. <laughs> His projects and ideas are presented in a book that you see now uh, on the screen with the same title that was published by Forma Edizioni in 2020. As an educator, uh, Mario has been visiting professor in many schools of architecture. In 2014, he founded his own school, the School of Sustainability, a postgraduate training center for young architects, giving it a home above his office in Bologna. It is there that on two occasions, over consecutive academic years, we held very successful joint events between our AA SED students and those of Myers School of Sustainability, engaging the students in collaborative projects. We were about to finalize our third joint event when the lockdown forced us to have them postponed. And sadly, the same fate awaited a proposal um, that we had started discussing for an MCA, Mario Cucinella Architects exhibition and workshop at the AA. Let us hope we shall soon be able to renew these plans. In the meantime, Mario is here and please join me in welcoming him. Welcome, Mario. Hi, Hi Simos and Thanks for this opportunity. Always happy to be in contact with AA with you, but we know each other for so long. So and it's a great pleasure to be share this presentation with all the students. I you listen well? Oh, that's sound. No? Ah, principle is on. Ben? I have a maximum volume. Are you listen to me? I can hear you quite well. Okay. I see Musi okay. You all see okay? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear Simos too. It's all good. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. So I'm saying I'm I'm happy to be to be back in this connection with the AA and Simos. We know each other for a long time in a great event. And uh, I miss it to be in AA sometime to make some lecture and some work with students. So I will start my presentation by, by presenting that book, which is representing part of the work we did in the last 10 years. And we call this Building Green Futures, which is uh, the idea that we all share to, to build a really a new green future. So I think this is the challenge for all of architects and all the people in the planet, but I think for the young people is really the next generation challenge. So, uh, now, it doesn't work. Just a second. I can move my presentation. I don't know why. Sorry. Okay. Um, it was working until one second ago. Now it's not working. Why? Ben? Um, can you? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no. It's more than that. Okay. Oh, one. 
And just show you the environment where we are working now. I'm in Bologna. This is our head office. And uh, this is our new office wow. in Milan. And it's a very interesting building. It was built in 1920. It was a, a, a warehouse to, for, for textile. So now it's, it's using as an office. So th then when we talk about the use and using building, this is an example, no? It's uh, almost 100 years of time and then the building have a new life. So now we share our time between Milan and, and, and Bologna. So just to give you some very briefly number, we, we now growing and, and Simos know when that start was a little, little office. Yeah. Now we are more than 110 professionals, including architects, engineers, designers, community engagement expert, being specialist. So, you know, this, do this work is coming more and more hard, you know, in terms of, of, of competence. You know? And uh, this is our working model space. And we're running many different projects at the same time, and we have a lot of construction sites. So the, the experience of the office in the last 10 years is growing in a very fast also, I think thanks because we investing in uh, many years ago in 1990. You know, to, we, we are believing in sustainability was really the most important part of our work. So and now after so many years, we are now working hard to give to our client to any competition the possibility to work in, in this area of sustainability. So I want to just tell you what our world, what, what we're doing, you know? and. Uh, I chose some key words which I think help us to and you to understand what we are doing. No? And uh, I don't I don't want to use only the word sustainability because it's a really a very large continent inside. No, is is a the significance is very very wide. No, I, I like to use this word creative empathy as architects. So the way that creativity is very important. This is a part of our work. But the creativity needs to be driven by the empathy. So the connection with the place, connection with the people. So it's not only uh, uh, extravaganza, uh, it's the way we combine our idea of the future, but related with place. So I like the word empathy because make us in connection with people, but in connection with space. And also, Growing, we, we like using this word collective intelligence. You know, it's not it's not anymore the office of one person, but it is the connection between people creating a sort of a collective intelligence. You know? And this I take this word from uh, Stefano Mancuso, the professor who's working in neurology, in neurobiology of plants, and the, the, the same system of plants, there are collective intelligence that sharing information. And then I think that's the best part of the office now is really this idea of both multidisciplinary and connection between all the people in the office. But what are we doing? I, I, I see in my profession in the last years, you know, this attention about performance in buildings. You now this is a key point that we discussed it for many, many years. You know? But I think we are in the stage then the idea of a hybrid building. So the buildings are designed in a way that first they connect with climate. So we, we think in fully passive, no? And then we need maybe a little technology, no? A little bit to make our lives better. So I, I like the idea to start without any mechanical service and make an effort to design a building really strong connecting with that climate. And then, because there are regulations, there are many things in buildings, as you know, no. using technology as a part of the end of our idea of the building. This is a picture which is very important for us. We did a building in Ghana, in Africa, where there are special conditions. No? We are in subtropical climate. You know? So there are at least half of the year in a quite good climate condition. I say in a very close to the comfort zone. The only problem is the heat from the sun. The sun go up very quick, stay up, and then go down very quick. So if you're under shade, 
No, the temperature of the air is uh, between 23, 24, 25, which is acceptable. And in the sun is much more hot. No? So if we design a building is under shade, like the picture you see in the next, close to the tree, no? and we did this cantilever floor, the building is always fully 100% under shade. What we need as, as air conditioning, we only need for three or four months of the year. The rest of the time, the building is the free running. So I think what I try to tell you is, Sustainability building is about the design, it's not about technology. It's first, how you design a building in the right context. That is the challenger for architects in the, in the future. But of course, there are great evolutions and great technology. We call this artigital tools. I mean, it's between artisan and digital. No? We are still in the middle. No? We are not anymore fully artisan, artisanal, but we're still working a lot with digital. And we did this project, which I'll show you after this presentation about this design house and build house with a 3D printer with the earth. But, uh, but what I'm saying, the technology is a tool. Everything is on the end of the designer. So how you design a house, how you can make an interpretation, how you can connect the design to the climate and then tools make you things much easier. And also the research-based practice. So I think more and more this work is coming very more difficult. Of course, it's difficult to be an architect, but to facing the challenge of climate and all related to materials, performance, all connected together, I need, we need to make research. So that's why the office have a department of research called R&D, Research and Development, they're dedicated to help architects in terms of finding solutions and find information and how we can progress our design based on the new challenge. This is a project that I will show you later is a, is a campus in, in, in Morocco. And also, I think that all knows this idea, uh, an architect is working from the macro scale, is a building, but also in the little things. This is, we, we design a series of objects called building object. So instead of to make object and transforming building, which sometimes is not really successful, we transform our building in object. You know? And that is the translation between the Ghana buildings and uh, a, pl a place for fruit, not designed in, uh, in metal. No? And also, which are, uh, this is the part which I like more, is the social responsibility of architecture. No? The architecture is a common good. So we design place for people, not for us, for the others. And I think this is very important. So now I think this is the best part of our work, you know, be able to understand the community and design something for the other people. Now, this is a little project we did here close to Bologna. It's a house for music for a high school. And every cylinder you can see is, a, is an instrument. So one is a guitar, another one is a drums, another one is a, is a, is a piano, another one is a violin. And this house is for the community, for the school, but also for the community. And I think this can be really change life of people because design building like this give opportunity to young people to discover music. And I find that very, I don't know, for me, is one of the best part of my work. And then as Simo said, we, we, as a social responsibility of the office, we're creating the School of Sustainability, SOS is the message of urgency. You know? And I think this was also growing by, by also the lesson from Simos, from other friends, they working so long time in this, in this field. And I thought it was a, a great possibility to transfer the knowledge we have in the office for 30 years, to transfer this knowledge to the young generation. But we ask something to the others. It's not only us to give it to them, but also then they give to us their vision of future, which I think is very, very important to understand what will be 
for the young people the future and what for them this the means of sustainability. So that's as as our our uh, social responsibility. As you know, this I'm sure Simu show you many times. This is our roadmap, you know, starting from Kyoto, Rio de Janeiro, '92, and then is the very ambition plan for the reduction of CO2 emission. Very ambition, which is, I think, is very interesting because we the, the, this roadmap asks to architects, I think, fundamentally to architects, how they can design new buildings, but also how they can work in the existing cities. You know, how we can reduce the impact of the city. The, it's time for question, it's not time for answer. Answer is very complicated, but it's time to put on the table the right question, how we do that? And which will be the, the architect's involvement in this? And of course, as you know, EC is, uh, is invest a lot of money in cities in Europe to increase the quality of life of people because the major point of this uh, roadmap of the reduction of CO2 is not only the green diplomacy, how to reduce the, 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 the use of fossil fuel, but also to create better conditions for life of citizens, how we can live better in our cities. You know? And that's, I think, is a very important focus in this. It's not only about the mission, it's about the quality of the life of the future in cities. You know? And as you know, it's important to know so big numbers, you know, and we're always fascinated, you know. And this is coming from uh, our friend, uh, Edward Mazria from, uh, from Santa Fe. So we carry out now in the planet almost 170 billion square meter of, of buildings, square meter, which is mean, this is the cross, this is the area built around the planet but what we expect to build in the next 40 years is more than what we built today. So maybe Europe is able to face in that problem, but what about China? What about India? What about South America? What about the place where the population grows so fast? So, and we are sure we have enough material to build all the square meter, then we are able to build a house with a lamp, with a fridge, with a television, with a concrete floor. So all this is in a very large view. And because your audience is very international for many countries, I'm sure the Chinese have the same question and the Indian people have the same question. How are we facing this big, big challenge? You know? So I, I want to say that the architects are, are very important for the next, well, they're always important, of course. But I think they're going to keep, they'll be a key profession for the future about this point. You know? But I want to show you something because we was very concentrating on uh, performance in building, you know, the, the, the consumption of building. You know? We did a lot of work, and there's a lot of regulation. But recently we are working in, in this uh, diagram to see where the CO2 emission, where, where they are the CO2 emission. Well, this diagram is about the life of a building of 70 years which is quite long. In America, it's between 15 and 20. In many other countries, it's maybe middle, a little bit more, a little bit less. But I take these numbers. Now, if you look at that diagram, you see the first two years, of production of material construction phase is already responsible for almost half of the CO2 emission. Then the rest, is the operation of the building. So we are very concentrated for a long time in the operation, so the consumption. Now we need to shift also about the material. Material have a lot of consequences in terms of the emissions and the way to the, the way they are, is organized a site work for the, all the waste. You know? So I think we are mature enough to understand then we are working hard on the performance and now we need to work hard on the, what we call recycling material, uh, con uh, what we call circular economy, all these things you can see in that picture. If you put not 70 years, but you put 30 years, you can see the diagram change a lot because instead of 41, it will be 61. So the importance of production and using the right material is very, very important for the goals we have in front of us. No? 
But that's the problem, you know. In some, the, the, the diagram is showing for the paradox of what we find today. You know? The CO2 emission is still growing. We are not yet be sure that the policy, especially European policy, are reducing the CO2 emission. And the other, the other curve is about the numbers of people in the planet. So it's still growing, and the square meters are growing in the future, no? as we saw. At the same time, the ambition is to bring CO2 emission in 2060 to 2050 to zero, no? at least for Europe. So that gap between the need of make many buildings and the ambition to reduce the CO2, that is the problem. So that's where we need to work. How are we going to do that? I don't have an answer, but I want to be clear that there is a lot of work to do, how to make building in the future to get that goal. But, but we have some solutions. No? I, I don't want to be too determinist, but I, I tell you, what does sustainability mean? No? Because this is a word that we're using too much. We lost also the meaning. No? And uh, I want to show this little diagram because I, I was very fascinated with that. Is but how we did before, how we did before the Industrial Revolution, how we make buildings, how people was living in buildings in 1980, or in the last in the last thousand years. You no, know, we did many buildings. We built almost everything without energy, without uh, electricity, without heating, without cooling. Maybe that was not the best time of our life, but we did. So maybe the idea is to rebuild a bridge of knowledge between now, because we have a goal. The goal is zero fossil fuel in 2060. We did before. So we did before the Industrial Revolution. Maybe. What I like to show you in the next picture, then we don't need to build as we've been before. That's not the point. I'm not nostalgic. But maybe we need to, in some way, study the knowledge, how people was able to deal with the climate and build in a very extreme climate. I think, Simos, you did one play about architecture in a, in a very difficult climate, like arid climate or, or, or hot climate. I remember one of your play, player book, no? So there's a lot of information, there's a lot of research. Maybe we need to read, look, the future, maybe it's not only in front of us, maybe it's back, maybe we need to look a little bit in the back. No? And, and I want to show you something, no? So we find that we need to find a new relation with climate and place, nature, and we do, but because we did that for millennium. So why we don't have a look a little bit in the past? Right? And last year I was uh, nine, I, I was 60 years old. That was my birthday. You know? It was August and, uh, 2020, you know? and I was planned to make a trip around the world. That was my my present to myself to say, I want to do a trip around the world to, to catch some of the key buildings, which I think are very important for me and can be a very important to share. A lot of our very well known, I'm sure, seems to know almost every, every project, every building. No? So, and I say, if I start my trip, no, go from Italy to North Africa or of uh, Saudi and, and go to India, and then go to China, go back to North uh, of Highland uh, or go to South America. So this is only a little catch about what we did. And I did a little book, which will be go out in English in the next few weeks, which I sent to Simos and to share to school. It's a 10 story about the journey in the past, but it's a story that tell you the knowledge, how people was able to deal with climate. So there are many, one is in Italy, it's a Palladium Villa in, in, in Treviso. Another one was the Jackal, the House of Ice in, in Iran. Then Marco Polo tells the story, he get an ice cream in, in 1234, because he was crossing Iran and the villages they has they offered to him an ice cream. How they make an ice cream? I think 
uh, Max Ford and, and Brian Ford, they're writing a lot of stuff about this, and, and I was very fascinated. Or the wind catcher in Pakistan, you know? there's a many, you know. I was to Ahmedabad in Gujarat to visit in the Step Well, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing building. It's still there. You know? Or in the Henan province in China, you, know, you see that picture. It's a, it's a master plan, beautiful. There's no buildings, the only courtyard with garden things. And, and that is really appropriate with the climate. No? So there are many examples that we can study, not to do again, but to understand the knowledge, how the people they were thinking to find a good relation with, I call a new friendship with nature. And also, uh, there's a beautiful story you can find on the internet about Garnish Island in the north of Ireland, no? in the west of Ireland. It's an amazing story about how the landscape architect was able to transform in a positive way and a very difficult place in the fjord of Cork in the, in the west of Ireland. Beautiful story. So I'm saying, wow, we have a very great challenge that we're discussing as a problem, but our friends in the past was able to deal with that. So I'm quite confident that we can win this, uh, this challenge. You know? And then, of course, I, I met a fantastic professor, then Stefano Mancuso, I'm sure she must know him. He's a neurobiology, neurobiology uh, uh, professor, which is study the intelligence of plants. You know? So we have a long discussion with him. And we say, what we, what the plant, a tree and a building have in common? What, what they have in common? Apparently nothing, but one thing for sure, they don't move, they stay there. So then you can see the buildings, you know, we say, well, a plants do a lot of things, you know? The plants is, of course, transforming CO2 in oxygen, you know, which is still one of the problems we have, you know, is make fruit and these leaves and shading and creating humidity and then creating, uh, creating a humus for the herd. And then the roots are the intelligent, the plants find minerals. So the plants is a very complex thing. No? They, and then plants are 40 million years in the planet. So they crossing many, many climate change, but they're still there. So why we don't study more about the behaviors of plants to understand the mechanism. And if you look at our building in the recent time, you know, building normally is, they are against the climate. You know? We're closing well, we make windows closed, we don't want to get any, any difference. We don't want anything about the external climate because it's changed. You know? We have this very strange idea that temperature in building must be the same all day for all the time also humidity, but they're very vulnerable because they are machine. If machine is broken, it's like us, if you kill in your head, you're dead, and the building doesn't work without technology. Now, this is what happened in the last 150 years. No? And then producing CO2 instead of mitigating the climate, and then have a roots, but the roots is against the earth around. So, of course, architecture is also culture, it's not nature. That's very need to be very clear. We build building to live in better, to have a museum, to produce in art, to produce in culture, to live in. So the building is a very important, but maybe what we need to do is learn for plants how they can build, in, they're able to adapt to climate. Adaptation is one of the key points of the design of the future. And also, if you look at this, this simple uh, diagram, no, plants don't move, a building don't move. Plants producing resource, a building consuming resource, no? and carbon absorption, the building producing. So if you do that confrontation, say, wow, we have a lot of things to do no? to, to, to improve our buildings and find some key relationship with the climate without destroy, destroy the, the environment. Yeah? And also, what, what can plants teach us in terms of technology innovation? No? And this is the Stefano Mancuso professor no? to, to tell us what we can do, how we can transform the urban planning, considering 
the, the ecological aspect before the urban aspect. So I think these are many, many uh, opportunities for all of you, all of us, of course, but all of you, to find a new idea of what we can plan cities and place in the future. And okay, this is a mistake. So I've just watched, show you some of the project. And I show you take is a 3D printed prototype made by local firm. So it was made by our office, SOS and WASP, which is a 3D printed company. And, and I'm starting with this picture. We, we built building in the planet for thousand years with her because it was available everywhere. You know? It's material and we can find everywhere. And it's amazing architecture in many, many places of the world. Also in Italy, in, a, in many countryside. No? And, uh, but the challenge of printing a house in her was to broken the paradigm about how we can make building a zero impact, impact zero. Now, this is a big discussion. Building that never be zero, never. But in this case, we try to say, maybe if I build with the herd, which is in the garden, I make a dig in a hole, treating the herd and printing, there's no transportation of material, it's made by the local herd, and then come back to be hurt again. So this is a prototype, but to show that we can do it. No? And so the sketch was about building a house with a little garden and, and water, and the purpose was maybe three print shelter for emergency you know, in vulnerably the context. Or, or that's the answer today, you know, is make a kind of refugees camp with tent. Why technology and design can be helped? And we help with the best solution we have in this context. You know? So that was the aim, the ideas behind this project no? and uh, and we built this uh, sort of a little village no so this is a picture that i show you the, the video and it's a very very light uh, site work very light no? but also the question was arise say, if the printer print anything no? depending of your design so i back to the idea that printer is technology but it's a very basic technology. What is driving a printer is the design. So, but if I have an answer of, I have a machine can print everything in any form, my first reaction is, well, but if I change the climate, the latitude, maybe the shape is different. No? And we back the idea that buildings are different in different parts of the world because it's a culture, of course, but also is related to climate. No? So if I built in hot, humid climate, maybe I like to create a sort of more stuck effect, more ventilation inside of the house, because ventilation helps to reduce the impact of the evaporation. Or if I build in the desert, maybe I can dig in a hole and print it as a little oasis, very well protected from the sun. Or if I do in the north, maybe I'm printing a big wall, a big glass to catch the lighting, especially in the winter, there's not enough light and very high protection of the, this room. So what I'm saying, the dream is to make a village. Why we cannot build a village in printing by her? And then when the village we don't need anymore, it's be back in the earth. So all the design was about the shape because printing, printing wet earth is not dry. So you need to design the shape, avoiding collapsing. And it's all about the wall. It's about the thickness of the wall. Uh, the way you build the wall with like a, like a bone, you know, with a lot of cavities to increase the, the, the insulation and the ventilation. So depending on climate, you can have a smaller, bigger, and then is really the part, fundamental part of the work, you know, how we can print, design this wall based on the information from climate. You know? And there's some, some uh, images. But the best part is, is now is the, the video. You know? 
This is the village is finished. Maybe it's in a very uh, fragile context. And then after maybe we leave and this become back in the nature. So this is a dream. You know? That's what we all want to do it. But buildings, they are not like this. You know? So I, I, it was very fascinating. A lot of people were fascinated. The idea that we can build something then after life, come back to be nature again. So it's a, a little video. Actually, it's only a few, few seconds. So this is the house when we finished the print and it was not easy because when you're printing this house, you have one part of the house is dry quickly then another part which is keeping wet. So it's a, it's a great challenge also in terms of how to do it. No? And that is the building's finish. Just to show you some pictures. And everything was printing. You know? The bed was printing the shape in the kitchen and uh, we planted the trees inside to make this idea that this, this glass is a sort of a skylight. You know? It's the only light coming from the top of the buildings, also including a grill for ventilation inside of the place. You know? And I tell you, I, when, I was, when the project was finished, I, I get inside, there was something very special in terms of emotion, not only for the architecture, but I think our body recognized the material. No? There is something in our DNA, maybe for a thousand years. No? And immediately you get the feeling of this ancient material. No? And I, I, for me, it was something that really take my, my body in some sort of an empathy with this material. No? It was a very, very interesting experience. No? That was presenting in COP26 in Glasgow in the, in the virtual pavilion for one of the projects uh, in, in this exhibition. It was, a, it was a great, now we are working now in another two prototype with other company and working with a different material, but I think it's a, it's a great challenge to using natural material and try to transform this material in a, in a modern contemporary house. But we not only do that, that is a, is a part of the dream, the research of the office, but we do now a, a tower in Milan, is a tower for an insurance company, this one, and it's a grill, it's a, it's a, it's a double ski in buildings. But also here we try to find a, a, a sort of a, how we can reduce the impact of a building. And this is a building, a tower towers are very expensive in terms of, of energy, are very complicated. And for a company like a, it's the second large, it's the fifth large company in Europe and the second one in Italy. So they have a lot of demand in terms of uh, 
technology and many things. But we say the shape is like an elliptic, you know? So the south face is an empty space because it's always difficult to put a table close to the glass of the south face. So we make a, an atrium, which is, is, a, is about 18 floors. And this atrium is a sort of a, of a reservoir, is a, is a ventilator in the summer to catch the heating from the, from the floors and reusing that heating to transform in cooling, or in the, in the winter time is a, is a sort of a, of a climate moderator. So we keep this heating from the sun and we bring it inside the building. Of course, that's not enough, but it's, it's the way the building reacts to that place. You know? Of course, we all work in, in BIM. I don't know if in English say BIM or BIM, and the building information modeling which we, of course, demand another level of competence for architects, engineers, how to deal with this complexity where we combining all the information inside of a building and putting in a file and managing that file, or using grasshopper for design of facade, and also do modeling model, like a, this is a paper model, so this is the our digital world, you know, we are working digital, but also producing ourselves, our model. That's the, the vision. So it's a, it's a canopy, this facade, and the moment is a double skin facade, the external facade is only one glass. And when it's coming down to the main square, it's, it's fly over and it's, it's become a very large canopy, cover all the piazza. You know? There's an auditorium in the ground floor. And this, this is the big atrium, no? which is crossing all the floors. Some of the floor is open, like a, a library, a lounge, and then you can watch this atrium. And inside is a spiral of, of green, you know? which is also moderating the climate, the humidity, but also it's a nice view from your office. You can see the city, but you have this kind of a space in the middle. No? So that is the, the atrium. So we almost completed. We have another year of work, but you can see the picture now. And the top of the tower is cut by an angle of 60 degrees, and is a is a garden. is a is a is a garden on the top, like a glass house. And this is, should be a, one of the lounge of these uh, these buildings. And the roof. It's a glass roof, but with photovoltaic. So we cover a part of the demand, not all, but part of the demand by the efficiency of the double scheme and the efficiency of the, the, the system of the photovoltaics and also the, the, the waters underground. So we're using for cooling, we're using the heat pump. So that is the, the, the lounge on the glass house. And this is now is under construction. So we, this is the building the facade, the structure. And we are now in the top of the building, which is a string, because we we we, skate, we stretch one side with the string, the other one to create this big eye, which is the, the most part, the interesting part of the, the the buildings. You can see in the end of the picture Torre Velasca and the Duomo of Milan. And this is the new skyscraper from Zadid and uh, and uh, Roman. So that is the tower, and that is the eye. So the top of this kind of a circle, which is looking Milan. So we have another. It's a little bit more advanced, but we have another year of finishes and completed the building. Then we finished a few years ago this. Arpe headquarters, the new headquarters for regional agency for environment prevention, was inspired by the Pakistan uh, wind catcher. As, as you know the story, I'm sure you know the story of these buildings. They catch in the wind and they bring the cold wind in the night inside the building. And during the day, they close that catch and keeping this cooling inside of the building. So, and then in the same time, we did this one floor building, it's all in wood construction, and, and is uh, made by a roof of 120 chimney. 
which is all this chimney looking south and bring light inside the building, but also ventilating the space. So you can see the diagram and uh, 112 things. Huh? So we have two options. One is the summer is increase the ventilation. We are in Ferrara, it's a very humid and hot climate. And so in the summertime, we can open the vent on the back of the, uh, the skylight and increase the ventilation from the, from the garden inside of the office. And in the winter time, we using this as a little glass house and the heating created by the sun will be using a, and uh, with a fan and put inside the whole building. Of course, they're not enough, but that cover, as you see in this picture, we have 30% of performance in thermal consumption, minus 30 and minus 40 in the, in the winter time. So this is only by the shape of a building. So the shape of the building, the decision you make, they're really part of the solution of the sustainability. Let's just explain a little bit better what I tell you already. But we do also some, some daylighting tests. Of course, you can do with the radiance or with many other digital tools. But when you do yourself, this is the laboratory of artificial sky. There are a few in England, I think one in Cardiff, and I'm not sure some, in some other place. You can test by your experience, you do experience yourself. You now, what's happening? June, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, how much lighting from inside, the quality of light, the intensity of light, but also if you change some color, you change the white, like a matte or glossy or a little bit gray, you can see the diagram of light change. So I think for an architect, it's very important to know that, to, to learn physically, you know, how the choice of orientation and the way you design this chimney, they completely change the, the quality of lighting inside of a space and quality of natural light is one of the key fun, fundamentals for people who work in an office. Of course at home too, but in office it's, it's much more difficult to find. You know? And that is a building. You know? It's uh, all the skylight watching the sea, the, watching the sky, and some on the perimeter are photovoltaic, so they're producing their own energy. And it's all prefabricating in wood construction. There's only a concrete floor, which is the foundation, and then everything is in wood. There's a little garden inside. You can see in that picture in the top of the vent when you can open. People inside. That's inside is very simple, very we left everything visible. And this is some part is closed, some part is open, and this is skylight. And I see the photovoltaics in some of these, uh, in, in some skylight. So, and I, I, I back in some other little project. You must tell me the time because I can talk for hours, but maybe Simos, you give me the maximum time and we can talk. So, I, I did a school which finished a few years ago, and with this picture, I show again. This guy is creating the best kindergarten in the world. He's a Lord Malaguzzi. And he said, architecture is one of the educators because the space educates. It tell, the space tells to the kids something. So I was taking this phrase very serious because I think sometimes we design school as an infrastructure. School is an emotion place for kids. It's the first time in many places they leave home and they go in the public space, in a social place. No? And of course, sorry for the Italian, but the, the, the learning process is strongly related to the quality of the space. So more quality, design, colors, light, make people, especially kids, to learn faster. No? So when they designed the school, was in my mind, this, this project was built in 1960, 1957, eh? and it was my school, my kindergarten. And it was designed by one of the most famous modernists in Italy, Giuseppe Vaccaro, was 
an architect who was uh, one of the great season in Italy after the Second War to build uh, architecture. No? And this is a very small, there are only two classrooms. You can see the, the wall is like to arm, no? to keep you inside, but it's small, no? because you are small, you're only one meter, no? you don't want a big wall, you want a little wall. Now it's a full of trees, now it's beautiful because it's, uh, the park is growing, it's fantastic. But I remember very well, I'm not sure, all of you, what you remember, if you remember your kindergarten. And then come to me, if I remember this place, maybe there was something taken in my heart. The light, the little space, the little garden, because I feel protected. You know? So, look, architecture doesn't move, but traveling and memory leave you memories. Maybe sometimes nice or sometimes not nice. But it is important to know that your buildings, your space, will be part of the experience of the, 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 the memories of people. You, know, you bring with you your memories. You know? And I find that very engaging. You know? I think you must be careful when to do that because people can remember forever. You know? So I, I, I was uh, very fascinated by remembering something like this. I was only four. You know? And then come to me this Pinocchio. I'm sure everybody knows the stories of Pinocchio, not the little puppet. You know? And it's a moment of the story when Pinocchio with his father, they was eaten by a whale. And Pinocchio was lost in the belly of the whale for two years. If you're reading this part, it's a two pages, extraordinary page, and Pinocchio find in the darkness of this whale, he saw a little light because his father, his father tried to find him and the whale eating also his father to and he was there to looking for him. No? Then the story is beautiful because Pinocchio saw a little light in the darkness. Now he starts to run and then he finds his father. No? And there's a, it's a moment, uh, it's a very, very emotional moment in the book. No? I, I, I advise you to read because I, I find this is a, a metaphor also of the womb of the mother, no? protect you. No? And from that, I designed a building because I thought for a kid, especially between zero and three years old, you know, oh, zero is a very small, few months, but our kids of one year, one year and a half, two years, is they have a, they knowledge about space. You know? And maybe it's the first time they left home, domestic place with fathers and mothers. You know? you know? And then they go in a public space. They go in another space, which is not anymore home. It's not domestic. It's a social. So what we can leave to their kids in their memory, you know? And I designed this. It's a way. It's the inside of a way. And then I'm saying kids, they, at least they discovered it is also another place. It's another architecture. It's not only your home, your cube with your room. It's a fantastic place, you know? And then this maybe helped your imagination. Or you maybe... I don't know, these kids, maybe they think him to be in some space shuttle or inside of an animal or something. Then I think architecture help to people to thinking, you know? And, and, and then it's, it's built close to here and it's in the plane. You know? And the plane of, of this region, they're only in vertical, there's only trees and sometimes a little tower of a church. You know? So the repetition of elements are very important. You know? So that we build this repetition of all elements, they're all one after the other, you know, like this. But the simplicity of the structure is completely different when you look inside. You know? And uh, this is the classroom, this is the little bedroom so where the kids they can see a few hours. And the garden was designed by a landscape architect, was designed like a bird. You can see the eye and the, and the nose. You know? And then every piece of the garden is an experience because kids, they don't know what season means. They don't know flowers. They, they don't know. So the garden is make them to discover the world. So it's a little bushes where, um, what do you call it in English? Papillon, what's it called? Butterfly, they come out in March, March, April. 
So from these little bushes, ooh, they come out. So they know it's March, April. Then it's a flower in the winter time. It's a, it's a, a lot of flowers in the summertime. It's a lot of smell. So what is about school? It's not all about play or learning. It's about the experience of nature. And also to learn, because kids are very fast learning, you know? then we're using the, water, the rainy water for the toilet. You know? And then teachers say, well, look, you know, with the toilet here, we're using the rainwater. And then the kids go home and ask to their father or mother or whatever family they have, but what can kind of you, what do we use at home? We use portable water. And that's not good. So and what we do electricity with portable tapes and it's a part of the learning experience for the teacher to explain how these buildings work. And I think we put the seeds for a new generation of people aware about the college, you know? and that is the place. And they're all super happy, you know, they play, the kids play in this kind of a wall coming on the floor, and there's a lot of daylighting, they don't need on lighting for all day, there's a, the kids, they discover it. And one important thing is the kids that age, they're learning about the space, not only by touching, you know? they don't touch, they, they leak. So you need to be careful about material, no? All the painting, everything is in supernatural to get the kids the opportunity to touch and link everything. No? That's why I make my work so exciting, you know? Be an architect, so I, I, I love that because you really create experience for people, no? And I, I hope that some of this dream, no? some of this memory is keeping in the head of these kids, no? Oh, that is the laboratory and blah, blah, blah. I, I go fast. And that is the whale in the night. Then I, I did a, a very particular project in Italy. It's very complicated. Talk, touching and do some work in the old historical uh, villages, you know, because all monumental things, and all protect. So, with the mayor of this village, which is close to Pisa, which we are in Tuscany, you know, the, 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 the local government, they own that building you can see on the red line, and they want to transform this building in a social housing, art, artist housing, and a library for, for the kids, students of this village. So give some facility, there will be a little bar, a restaurant, uh, an exhibition area. So what we did is, from the beginning, this is a really, really early sketch, you not know, to renovating the buildings. And then under the road of the external part of the village, built a library. And more than a library is a place for the students and they can go to get your coffee and talking and uh, at some conference and study freely, you know, and, and also a bridge, which is called cantilever on the landscape. You know? So there's some study models in the beginning, and then that's the project, you know? And so we're renovating the existing historical buildings, introducing these bow windows, so it's just a, like a picture, you know? It's make a, a clear picture about the landscape outside. It's the bridge, which is bring people outside of the edge of the city, and they look in landscape, but also they look in the city, you know? And under that is this library and this uh, place for, for, for the student. Huh? So a new piazza was creating, and it's a very, very beautiful place. Huh? And the library, but I want to share the picture, which is uh, more interesting. So th that's the building built. That's not uh, a random, it's a real picture. And then you can see, and the point we are, I like to arise is, you know, it's a big discussion about the COVID. You know, people can, they maybe want to live outside cities. You know, it's, it's a big thing, that, I don't know, in England or in other parts of the world. But in Italy, in many other countries, European, we're discussing maybe we are not leaving everybody in the city. Maybe we're going to live in a small city, medium size. But if you want to live in a medium sized city in the village, you need some contemporary place. You know? And I think the challenge for the Italian cities, small cities, is the architecture. If you make a new architecture, like this one, is a, 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 a theater, but at the same time it's a library, uh, is a, a place for people meeting, 
and uh, it's a place for artists to go to live there for a short period. It's a house for people in the village. So it's a mix all together and become a new destination for the citizens. That is the cantilever uh, bridge. And uh, you see the landscape. We are not in Chianti Shire, but it's a very nice area, very beautiful. This is the library. And this is the system of connection inside of the existing buildings because they are all there was not connected, it was abandoned. So we created this connection between area of exhibition, area for residence, and uh, you can go down to the stairs to the library. An artist was painting this wall, and this man was a very nice guy, which he think he thinking then art, contemporary art, could be a way to change the, the destination for the little village in, in, in this area. And that is the bridge watching the city because we thought the people want to watch the landscape. In reality, the people was going the, in this bridge, in this cantilever bridge, to watch the city with another point of view. You, know? you can see that the whole windows, you know? the rooms, and then there are some uh, on the ground floor is a bar, and this is a door going in the village. That is the, the bow windows. And that is, uh, it's a small, a really small village. And now it's elected to one of the best villages in Italy for, 90, for 2021, not only for our work, but because there was a lot of creating a new space, a new school, is a bridge, is a, a, a new building. So it's a many things, but all combining and living together with the Easter. No? Then I have another few minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost finished. Huh? So I did this competition. I want to show you because I, I like to show the method. Now, this is the campus in uh, in uh, Morocco. We are in the almost desert area. No? So uh, this was inspired by these plants. You know, that all of you know these plants. You know? But what had particularly this plant? You know? So you can see the leaves of this. This uh, sphere, you know, our triangle. You know? So it means half of the time, no, half of the leaves are always in under shade. So the sun doesn't go inside and keeping that part, one part of the side of these leaves always under shade. The second thing is you see the top of the plants is super wide, full of spine, but it's, full, it's very wide because is there where reflecting the sun. Sun is go vertical and just go there and it's white because it's reflecting more. So the plants absorb less heating. And of course is the spine, you know, the, which is of course is defending the plants from animals. But in reality, every single element white there is catching the humidity in the air. So in the night when temperature change, and the, the, air, the water in the air can become a drop in the top of the spine and go inside of the plant. So the plants take water from the air, not from the ground. So, and then when you study that, you say, wow, what the intelligence of this plant? Maybe it takes thousands and million years, I don't know. But we find a solution to adapt to the external climate. We are not able to do it. The plant did. So I am fascinated by this because it's a lesson. I don't want to say we need to do a, a building like this, of course, but I know we can start to thinking about the building. You know? So we make this as a residential uh, campus, you know, this little oasis. You know? And uh, the sketch was yeah, if I make a little a circle, you know, it's a courtyard inside which maybe I could plant because I can use the gray water and water for the plants, but also outside I can make a sort of a, of a, um, a solar protection, you know, avoiding direct sun, and at the same time I can see outside, you know, the, 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 all these elements are like this, 
And I can make it by terracotta because terracotta absorbed water in the air when it's humid and then give it back during the day. No? No? And, and this is the lesson for what I'm seeing. No? Oh, maybe I don't want to do it like this, but I can do it in another shape and understand how this facade can be really make me uh, dealing with climate. You know? And then the solution we find is 70% of the facade is not exposed to the sun, which is mean we reducing the heat from the sun. That's what we did. This kind of elements outside in terracotta, shading the buildings during the day, but at the same time open the view from the room of the student outside. And you can see in that uh, in that picture, you know, it's a thermal picture. You can see the dark is the the area with no heating. So the plants really find the shape to adapt themselves to a very, very difficult condition. So why we don't do that for some buildings? Why we're not thinking about it? And that's the oasis inside of the residential for students. We can do plants, of course, but we can do it only in this little place because we have the energy, we have the water, we can do, and then of course, that's creating a little microclimate inside a protected space. Anyway, that's was uh, And the last one, and not least, we just finished a project in Rome for the new headquarter for the Roma Tre University. It's a three little tower. I go fast because I only want to share the picture. And it's a place for students. It's a piazza for students. Here there are offices, but also classroom. Uh, called telematic room, so the people, the students go for uh, using computers. And also is a ground floor is open to the cities and top floor is a, a garden for people who's working on that place. No? Okay, this is the, the design we did before construction and then we built. I'll show you very quickly. So these are three towers open and to the south. And you can see by Paul, all these holes bringing light in this ground floor garden. And then that's the space for the students. You know? They're coming in Rome, climate is fantastic. You know? It can be quite hot in the summer, but for a long time now, from, from February, temperatures are very comfortable. So you can stay outside, but you need shade. And then this connection between the floor, what is a garden and this city levels, yeah, the city go inside of the space. Yeah. And I was fighting with them to creating this is really the open to the city. University is a democratic expression of a culture. You yeah. need to be open. Yeah. So, and then we put down the guardrail you know, the, and created this kind of a lighting against concrete. Yeah. All right, that is the end. That's the book, it's in Italian, but it will be out in a few weeks, called The Future is a Journey on the Past, and the Tenth Story of Architecture. So I will send to AA an English copy, and it's, a, it's not, a, not technical, it's a, a, a diary of an architect who traveling around the world and take notes. And uh, was, uh, for me, it was a very, I can't make this trip, but maybe next year, but uh, I traveling in, with my memory, so that's, that's the project. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mario. I, this medium is terrible for saying thank you because you, you don't see the person is thanking. But I'm, I'm trying. Um, um, let's. Just need to get out of this. I'm just reading some of the comments. Yeah, in fact, I, I'd like to invite some comments here. Have you found some? Well, the people oh, yes. looks, looks very happy, but <laughs> I, I hope it was clear enough. Oh, you were very, you were very clear. In fact, I, I, I wanted to say that. Well, firstly to thank you for the great lessons that you've illustrated. And, and, and they reflected vision, but also 
clarity and that combination, which I think is very powerful. And I, um, I, I like this phraseology, a new friendship with nature yeah. as part of creative empathy. So in, in, in these few words, I think you've encompassed a huge amount. Um, I, I have... Well, thanks for all the comments. They're all very positive and happy. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it's, you know, Simos, you know myself for a long time. So, I, yeah. you know, the engagement that we are deep in the last years. And also, thanks for the relationship with many friends. But, uh, you know, to be an architect and talk about sustainability sometimes is, is difficult no? because building industry is. Uh, is a hard place and the development yeah. is a hard place. So I'm saying we are not always 100% happy about what we would like to do it, but that is the way this, 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 uh, be an architect is, is try to help clients, help uh, people to understand and improving slowly, slowly or faster and faster these buildings. Okay. I mean, well, um, sh shall we? Sh uh, yeah, there's another. Co some more comments coming, Mario. Yeah, reading that uh, is it's open. You're reading them. Really inspired. Yeah. I can see some of our um, students and ex-students. Um, A student from many, many countries. How many students are now in, the, in this course? Well, just over 1,000 this year, all wow. together. In your course or in all the... No, no, no. In our course, we've got about 30. Ah, good. And some of them are looking at you. Um, I... Um, well, for some reason, I'm failing to find the button to um, stop sharing, uh, can somebody help? Can I, I stop the candidates? I, I stop, okay? Yeah. okay? Okay, great. So so now we can, well, I, I was saying, so now we can see faces, but <laughs> the faces are. So guys, any, any uh, more comments or questions? And uh, now you can speak because we can see you and then we can click. Okay, I let you want to say something. Go ahead. Oh. We need to unmute. <laughs> Do something. I think there's a question in the chat. Okay. Can you comment on your building design and material related to the circular building? Yes. Now we've got a group of our students, they're all sitting together. Hello, guys. Are you, can you unmute yourself? Was it was a question about the... Oh, there they are. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Oh, is that all? Well, thank you. Very, very <laughs> interesting <laughs> comment. <laughs> to the point, <laughs> it was written to the point. <laughs> no, it, it was a question. Oh. Yeah. Did he find the question? <laughs> Hello. Hello, anybody? No, oh, was the question about somebody asking about the circular economy, circular material? No, I, right. think, I think it's still, uh, there are two things interesting to say. One, 
there's a lot of uh, material now coming on the market by the Silk Road economy. And we find more and more company working in this area, like 100% recycling ceramic, 100% recycling wood panels, and uh, people creating using bamboo uh, structure, so it's all renovating very quick. So many material come from the glass. So it, I think the world of industry has become more and more interested to producing material with uh, material they have a second life or third life. You know? And that's, of course, reducing the impact of using primary material. You know? So I think there are more and more available material in this field. The world of construction is very conservative. So you can do part of this. But in many, many buildings, it's still difficult to apply all this material. I, I'm happy that more and more clients ask to us a part of a structure. Of course, that is difficult to use in some uh, not primary material. But for many, many uh, finishes or many, many material inside of a building, they all ask mm -hmm. to using material come from a second life. And uh, like the towers in Milan, Almost all material we're using for the finishes all come from that area, from the, the circular economy. And uh, we did a very interesting project. We maybe have another time to explain you. We did with the young people from uh, the school, with uh, using the 3D printer, we're using plastic, not from waste. But interesting, when you recuperate all the plastic, which are different kinds of plastic, in the end, these are Another part of the waste you cannot use it anymore. You throw it in, the, in some place. No? So we find the company that using that last part, the dirty part of the plastic, and they transform this in a powder, and we design tools, we, a, a stool. No? And, and we did in the piazza here, we make a laboratory, a workshop for people and showing that you can bring your plastic and we transform it and design objects. So I think it's still early, but there's a lot of things happen very quickly now in the market, which are, make me quite uh, happy to see that will be a very big change in the next few years. Yeah. Well, Mario, many thanks yet again. Uh, I think we'll close this session now. Maybe okay. we can uh, have a word uh, at the end, yes? Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you all for attending this. Ciao. Bye for now. Ciao. Thank Ciao. you so much. Ciao.